Please give a warm Caymanian welcome to Andrew Grill. Are you digitally curious? Now I know we have the Mentimeter app, but I'm gonna go old school. Can I get you all to stand up please? But AI is in the news everywhere, so I wanna take you through a bit of an AI history lesson. I wanna go from Turing to Transformers. Remember, I don't work for a vendor. I'm not from a big company. I'm gonna tell you like it is. And also as an Australian, you're guaranteed I'm gonna tell you like it is. AI is an overarching terminology. Basically, the field of computer science focused on creating machines that can mimic human-like behavior. So machine learning is a subset of AI. We go one step further to deep learning. And then finally, generative AI, which we've been all playing with, a subset of artificial intelligence that uses techniques such as deep learning to generate new content like text, images, video, and voice. And last year, I was in Abu Dhabi on stage with the CTO of Amazon, Werner Vogels, and I grabbed a copy of his slide. He said, I don't know what the big deal is about AI. We've been using it for 25 years. Data quality is actually really important. And I know in the government you'll have data in every single ministry. It'll be in different formats, different locations. And around the world, I often ask my clients three questions about data. What data do you have? What data do you need? And what data would you like? And after my talk, we're gonna do some table work. And I want some of you to think about the data you have in your own um, department. What data is there? What could you access? How could you improve the lives of citizens by having AI process some of that data? How will I source the data? How will I get it into an AI system to be trained? So when I heard that Stephen Fry had his voice cloned, I thought, I wonder if I can do that. So I went to a website called Eleven Labs. I paid $5. Hello Cayman Islands government leaders. I've generated a clone of my voice allowing me to say absolutely anything I want. The first thing is explainability. Can you explain how your model works? Do you have the right sort of data from the model to learn from? If you're looking to build an immigration system, do you have all the data points that could make decisions that a human can make about whether someone is entitled to extend their visa into the country? Is the task large enough scale and repetitive enough that a human would struggle to carry it out? Would it provide information that a team could use to achieve outcomes in the real world? All the things I'm talking about today uh, are actually on a QR code. I wanted to give you six examples of how other public sector organisations around the world are using AI, but I think the quick wins, the imagination coming out of this room will be to see what other governments are doing with this new technology. Let's look, first look at Portugal. Let's move to Tokyo, the city of Kelowna in Canada. In Singapore, I'm sure many of you have played and used chatbots maybe within your own ministries, but when you've got the power of generative AI, not only is it giving the citizen a really quality, quality answer, what we're seeing in call centers around the world, when someone calls in and you've got the client's details in front of you, generative AI is able to go through the whole call history of when they've called before and make decisions about what you should do next. Well, I want to run you through some tools that you can be using at home, you can be using in your organization to actually make life a lot easier. And the first one I alluded to before was Microsoft's Copilot. And I've had a mantra for the last 30 years, and that is that to get digital, you need to be digital then in every room, in every department, in every group, there are actually two tribes. On one hand, there are the going digital. On the other side, we have the born digital. The two tribes need each other. You need a way to bring these two tribes into the same room and have a discussion and you can learn from each other. And the best way to do that is what's called a, with what's called a hackathon. But being the actionable futurist, I want to leave you with five things that you can do next week. Five actionable things. And finally, run a hackathon. That QR code will basically go to all the different resources that I've mentioned. Thank you so much for your attention this morning. Mm -hmm.